All right, so I'm going to run through the process of converting this model that we've downloaded here into the more accurate model that we want it to be. Now, I don't expect you to necessarily follow along with this, but I'm going to show you uh, the process of what it looks like. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is find the bodies that I don't want to have. Uh, a lot of these models that you download tend to have more stuff in them that you than, than you really need. So first and foremost, we don't need these wires. They're not even accurate, and I wouldn't use a model to represent something that would be pulled from a spec sheet. So let's go ahead and just get rid of those real quick because they just don't need to be there. So go ahead and select all of those. You see how I'm finding them over here in the bodies on the left. And then I press the delete key and that goes away. You can also see here that the creator here was using these sort of segments. If I right click on this and hit isolate, they're using these segments to kind of space out just how large this motor was going to be. I would like to be able to just kind of move the end cap here and then have the motor stretched to however long I want it to be. So I'm going to remove all of this stuff here as well. So selecting all of these bodies, and then I just press the delete key, so that gets rid of all of those. All right, so now I just want to look at this one body right here. I'm going to go ahead and isolate that, so right click on that, go to isolate, and I think I'm just gonna get rid of this chamfer that's running around the outside. It's another detail we don't need. So I could actually just click on that face if I hold control and click on all the faces, then we'll get rid of that. All right, so there we go. I have all those faces selected. Press the delete key, and there we go. Now we have a nice sharp edge there. I'm gonna right click on this body and say unisolate. There we go, now everything's back. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, there's some more fine details here that I just don't need. If anything, they it might make things kind of hard to mate to each other, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. Same sort of thing, I'm gonna get rid of this guy in here. Well, I made a giant hole. I could actually just go ahead and hit delete there, and there we go. Same sort of thing with that, we don't need that. And this stuff inside of here, I can get rid of that. So I like to keep my reference models nice and simple. There we go, nice and clean. So at this point, I actually want to be able to start to modify this motor so that I can use it for whatever you know dimensions I end up pulling from a spec sheet like this. So to do that, I need to start capturing the design history. So let me go ahead and hit a save here. And now to start capturing the history, I'm gonna right click on this document settings and I'm going to go down here and say capture design history. Uh, I find that I do a lot of deleting of little parts uh, at the very beginning when I get something like this. And I don't like to have a big messy history of that. I also find that sometimes when you when you do this, uh, when you start to delete parts after that, it tends to take away everything. So if I hit this button and hit delete, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to happen. So you can see why I, I, I waited to start capturing the history now. All right, so the first thing I need to do here is get the dimension from front to back correct. So I'm looking for 20.5 millimeters and we're currently at 27.4. So I'm going to use the move command here. I'm going to keep this in translate and we're going to move it to the right 6.9 millimeters. So that way when I measure from back here to here, it's now 20.5. However, I noticed that this body here didn't move with it. So let me edit that feature and select, um, go back and select this one as well. Actually, you know what I'm going to do before that? Let's go ahead and get rid of that move command and I'm going to use the combine command here to combine these two bodies together. There we go. Now let's move this body 6.9 this direction. All right, so I want to fill this gap now. So I'm going to go to extrude and I'm going to say from one object to the next, and I'm going to make it like this. And that's going to be a join command. So now this is all one body. But you notice if we go back here and we edit this feature, and if we were to drag it one way or another, then that extrude is always going to take up that space. So at this way, uh, this way we can drive everything off of one dimension right there. Cool. All right, so the next thing is that this shaft is too long. It's currently 24.2, it needs to be 20. 
So I'm just going to go to the press pole. I'm going to move that negative 4.2. and that is 20 millimeters. All right, so now I need to add the flat to the shaft here. So let's go ahead and create a sketch on the end of that. To do this, it's usually easiest just to take a line that goes like this, and then another one that starts from the middle and goes straight down here like that. And then press the X key on this one, hit the dimension key, and that is going to be 4.5. And now I click on this area right there and extrude cut that back 16.5 millimeters. So there we go. All right, so there's two more steps I'm going to do here. You notice how we still have two bodies. Uh, we could simplify this a little bit more if we combine all of them into one body. So let's just go ahead and do that. That also makes them all kind of the same color right there because we inherit a little bit of the visual style from one to the other. And then I'm going to move this body. And I'm going to pick point to point. So I'm going to go with the center point of this circle and I'm going to move it to the origin. So I'm going to make sure that that is visible and I'm going to click on that and there we go. So now when I bring this in, if I wanted to use the origin, I could, I could use that and I could fix it in place very easily. If there's one more thing I would like to do with this model, it might be to change these holes from kind of their generic mm, thing to something a little bit more accurate. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go here and uh, click on this face, go to sketch. And then I'm going to project the existing geometry into a sketch. So I'm going to press the P key. And then I can start to click on these edges here. And that's going to locate a bunch of circles for us. And because we know a circle has a center point, then we could use that for the whole command. So there we go. Click OK. Finish sketch. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to um, hide this sketch real quick. And then I'm actually going to go in here and I'm just going to delete these faces real quick so we get rid of the holes. So press delete. And now if I reveal those, those are still located and they're located based on the history. So they won't float around on us. I'm going to go back into the hole command. I'm going to click on that first point right there and that one right here. And I know in this drawing that there are four M3 with a depth of 2.5 millimeters. So I went through the whole command over here and I selected that. So that right there kind of shows us the diameter, which we can kind of already figure out from the previous hole, but more importantly, the depth. So we don't end up trying to pick a fastener that's too long. All right, so there we have it. That's a nice close representation to what the actual thing will look like in real life. All right, so I saved this up. The next thing I'm going to do here is close that part. I'm actually going to rename it. So at this point, it's going to be the NEMA 17 stepper motor, and we can call it a template. So the cool thing about this is that we can right click on this and we can hit the copy button and actually produce more and more of these models. And as we produce them, we can add the length and the other descriptions to them. Uh, so we don't need to go through this whole process every single time. So if I open up this model that I just copied right here, and I go back to the edit feature and I want to make it longer. So let's say rather than this motor, I'm going to go down to something a little bit larger like this guy. So for this motor, once again, we can see that the shaft is going to be a little bit larger, 24 millimeters, and the length here is also a tad bit longer. So I know if I roll the history back here, I can measure this out. Okay, we're at 27.4. So rather than moving it 6.9 this way, I'm actually going to go negative. 11.6 and there we go so now that's going to adjust that motor and make it you know more accurately represent the other motor i'm trying to make so in just a few clicks we've actually made another motor right here and then i can go over here and i can right click on this hit rename and this might be nema 17 maybe i even drop the stepper motor or maybe i keep it and then i add the part after it so that's the model number from step line right there. So there you go. So that is what that motor is. Cool. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of 
the process that you have to run through as far as looking up data and then finding a model that's close, verifying it, and then kind of manipulating it in such a way to where you can kind of use it over and over again inside of your system, inside of a library or whatever it is you're doing. And in the next exercise, we're going to take these parts and we're going to bring them together in an assembly.